Okay, so Pi News episode 48, and I'll come back to this picture sent to me by XRIAR. It is very, very cool. Uh, but uh, I'm using my Pi 4 8 gig, and I've installed a fresh copy of Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye, and I'm fully up to date. You can see there's no update notifications there. So let's skip into the news. So the first story continues with Game Boy, and uh, you can see Hackaday Game Boy becomes Super Game Boy with a pair of Pies. Now, it's different to the original Super Game Boy, uh, which looks like this, and it's basically a cartridge that you could put your original Game Boy cartridges in uh, and then use it in a SNES and play it on your big screen with full-size controllers, which came out in 1994, and it was $60 at the time, or £50 in the UK. Where this build is different is the creator has used an original NES case, uh, an original Game Boy, and uh, you can see there's a couple of Raspberry Pi Picos in here. One of them takes the video signal from the Game Boy, and instead of sending it to the LCD screen, it's converted to VGA, which can then be sent to a full-size monitor. The other Pico allows you to connect a full-size controller to it. And uh, it's, it's just very, very impressive. There's so much detail in here. Uh, actually, there's a close-up picture of... Uh, how it's all wired together and everything. The dedication that goes into this is very impressive. There's a really good video as well. I recommend you have a look at the video that's linked in this story. Um, but yes, uh, amazing work. I'll come back to Game Boy uh, with that picture, but also a little bit about VR later on. Next up, loads of people picked up on this story. Uh, Clever Hack finally brings CarPlay to your Tesla. And if we scroll down, a Raspberry Pi makes it all possible. Tesla refuses to add CarPlay to its vehicles, so you're stuck with the company's own infotainment system, which doesn't have its own Apple Music app. Or you can hack together a CarPlay upgrade by yourself. So it's running a custom version of Android, which he streams the CarPlay interface to the Tesla's built-in web browser. And it enables you to have uh, maps uh, with turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Apple Music works as well. And you can even use the Tesla's steering wheel controls to control it. Uh, loads of people picked up on this. It is great. Let's have a look and see if any of the videos are there. It mentions that touch delay is getting a bit better, but yeah, just, just really impressive. A great use for a Raspberry Pi. Tech Radar has a story. Uh, Raspberry Pi is now selling its products direct, but don't get too excited. A new Raspberry Pi store is here. And if we scroll down, it's called Raspberry Pi Direct, uh, and it allows you to purchase products directly. Um, but you can't buy Raspberry Pis on there. Currently, there are just two things listed on the site, uh, the RP2040 microcontroller. You can buy it in reels of 500 or 3400. The later bill costs $2,380, uh, which makes for a unit price of 70 cents. And they've got a blog post from Eben Upton. The company has been able to stockpile large quantities of the RP2040 microcontroller despite the shortage. We have sufficient wafer stock on hand to produce 20 million chips with more on the way. If you want to build your product on a microcontroller, you can actually buy, in 2022, the RP2040 is your friend. And a little update on my 3D printer. I was offered a resin 3D printer, but when I looked into all of it, uh, even though the print quality is better, I thought it wasn't for me. So I contacted Elegoo, and they're sending me a filament 3D printer. So if you can leave any comments uh, on what I should be printing out, I'm definitely going to print out one of these SD card readers that was sent to me by a subscriber. Uh, it is really, really useful and better than anything I could find to buy. Uh, and obviously something like the 52 Pi case is a 3D printed item. Um, but uh, yeah, what sort of thing? I probably do need something for my Pi Zero 2W. So people could send me designs or things that they uh, think are worthwhile or any hints and tips on 3D printers, I'd much appreciate it. Tom's Hardware did a story on a Raspberry Pi detecting the shockwave from the Tonga volcano eruption. Developer and ex-Pi Moroni pirate Sandy McDonald measured the resulting global pressure wave using a Raspberry Pi. According to McDonald, the measurement was taken from over 10,110 miles away in the UK city of York and took approximately 14 hours and 20 minutes to reach the Raspberry Pi. There's more details in here uh, and obviously links in there as well. But yeah, a terrible event at all those miles away and it was detected here in the UK. A lighter story from Twitter, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero 2W with a 2.7 inch display uh, it's got two joypads, a keyboard, and an RFM95 long-range radio built-in chip. Uh, it just looks really cool. I like the purple. I love the fact that it's so super slim. And uh, if we flick through, there's a few more photos here. See it in the hand, looks impressive as well. Blackberry, raspberry, now purple berry in my pocket. Building three free samples. Time for hashtag giveaway to the best commented retweet before the weekend. 
more Tom's Hardware, uh, and this time it's the PiCast. The PiCast is a Raspberry Pi podcast uh, by Tom's Hardware, and they have some great guests on there. There's been some really good episodes in the past, uh, lots of information to be got from there. And if we scroll down, because it's the 10th anniversary of the Raspberry Pi uh, on the 29th of February, uh, they're doing a show on the 28th, and they have Eben Upton on again. And he always gives out something, some information about up and coming things. What we hope for, obviously, is the Raspberry Pi 5. It would be brilliant to have an announcement for that. So back to this Game Boy frame. Uh, I'm really impressed with this. x Art offered me a frame. Uh, they said, which one would you like us to send you? And uh, I picked this Game Boy Color one just because I thought it looked really smart. And the Game Boy is so iconic. Um, but there's so many. I, I just want all of them, really. Uh, and I'd love to see this in like a museum or something or even... Uh, you know, a cafe or something like that, because it is just really, really interesting artwork. If you're into technology, it is so, so impressive. So you can see here, uh, we've got the D-pad, we've got the A and B buttons, we've got the little rubber membrane there, the on-off button, all the circuit board, all the lights. And if we scroll down where the cartridge goes, headphone jack, DC input, the battery hatch, just the whole lot is just so well done. And it just looks so impressive. The speaker looks cool as well. Uh, so let's have a look at their website. So x Art is a photography studio, photographing products, and uh, their lead photographer had an accident where he dropped his iPhone 6 and uh, had seen a project about someone putting an iPhone in a frame and decided to do that to his. And loads of people who had seen the project were really impressed. So they collect phones from authorised phone suppliers and uh, disassemble them, clean them, sterilise them and create all the framed artwork. And uh, there's loads of different products. So we have a look at the products. So iPhone wise, uh, they do the first gen iPhone right up to the iPhone 10. Uh, it looks like they don't do anything later than that, but that would kind of make sense because you need tech that's uh, either broken or, or not worth repairing. Uh, so if we click on the first gen iPhone, which was surprisingly chunky compared to today's standards. And uh, you can see if we click on here, the level of detail look with the speaker, vibration motor, SIM card tray, it, is, it just is really interesting. And I would definitely love to just walk along and see every single frame and have a close look at everything that's there. Uh, what else have they got? So games consoles, Game Boy, uh, the Game Boy Color like I've got, Game Boy Advance I was particularly fond of. Uh, I had one of those for quite some time. There's various different tools to take it apart because they also do DIY where you can actually create it yourself. So you can take your device apart and they supply a frame and uh, a background and you can basically do the whole project yourself. Apple Watch, same sort of thing. I've got a, a Series Zero, so the original Apple Watch upstairs, which I don't use anymore, which actually came apart on its own. Uh, the glue came apart, but you can see again, the level of detail is really, really nice there. So if you want to do this yourself to your old phone, uh, there are free download templates which are available on the site. Uh, and also if you click on the blog, there are several videos which show you how to do it. So I'll put a link to the site in the description, but once again, thanks to x Art for sending me this, it's much appreciated. PC World had this story on a Compute Module 4, and uh, you can see that the Compute Module 4 clips in here, so it gives it the same sort of spec as a Pi 4, but you end up with four Ethernet ports, five SATA ports, two full-size HDMIs, ATX power, because you're going to need power for all those extra drives, the intention of it is uh, it's designed primarily for network attached storage. So that's the whole idea of it, but uh, yeah, available for $99. Really weird story from raspberrypi.com. These fish can drive their tank to get treats. Scientists have taught fish to drive their tank around an enclosure using a motion detecting algorithm running on Raspberry Pi 3B+. So you can see here, success. A little treat is dropped into the tank each time a fish drives to the pink line on the wall. So weird. <laughs> on Facebook, uh, after struggling getting this up, I finally got my ebook server running on Raspberry Pi 4. 6,000 books. So this is a server on a Raspberry Pi. So you can see this is a, what looks like an iPad mini, I would say. Um, but uh, the Raspberry Pi is a server which has all the books and uh, they're accessible from wherever you are. So you can download it if you're not at home. 
and uh, get access to 6,000 books. Cambridgeshire Live uh, did a quick fire with uh, Eben Upton. If we scroll down, a couple of things I wanted to show. Tell us something surprising about the company. We had sold a million Raspberry Pi computers before we hired our first employee. What one rule would you change to make your business more prosperous? I wish there wasn't a global semiconductor shortage at the moment. We sold 7 million Raspberry Pis last year and could have sold over 10 million had we not been constrained. And there's more in there. I'll put a link in the description. The Arc IO survival deck was in Hackster IO. Packs of Raspberry Pi, SDR, environmental sensors and more. And there's actually a keyboard in it as well. <laughs> it just looks great. Dubbed the Apocalypse Repository of Knowledge Input Output, or Arc IO. Powered by Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. So the design came around while they were planning a mobile weather station. And if we scroll down, you can see there's the keyboard in here. It's like a lid that lifts off. Load of Ethernet ports. Custom 3D printed frame. And you can see it out in the field in this picture. A couple of software updates now. So uh, Consta Kang released a newer version of Android 12. Uh, Lineage OS. There's a TV version. I haven't done the TV version because there isn't uh, the Google Play Store for it. I mean, you can use it, but uh, if you want to get the major apps, I would say it's worth having the Google Play Store on it for all the sort of commercial TV apps like Netflix and Amazon Prime. I did show uh, recently that Amazon Prime and Netflix is working in this version, the Consta Kang Android 12 version. Uh, and if we click on it, it shows the change log. Loads of things keep getting updated. It's really impressive. Hardware, video decoding and encoding. Now this is something you don't often get on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it didn't work in my test, but the fact that they're working on it and the fact that these things keep getting added, I keep meaning to try uh, the camera support on there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, really nice to see this getting updates all the time. Speaking of updates and that version of Android, uh, Volx PC, who do uh, basically a version of Linux which you can install into Android, have made it compatible with that version, uh, so the Lineage OS 19.0 Consta Kang version. They've also given it, uh, so it's Bullseye XFCE and it now has a modern theme. And there's instructions on their site of how to do it. And I've got a tutorial if you get stuck, which shows the previous version, so it'll be a very similar principle to that. Now last up, uh, still on the theme of Game Boy, uh, I wanted to show, this is actually a PC now. This is my Melee Mini PC. Uh, and the only reason I've got this out is because it's the best way of interacting with the Oculus Quest that I've found. Uh, I think you can do this on Linux, but I've uh, had more success on PC. So if I launch SideQuest, and SideQuest is a way of installing alternate software on the Oculus VR kit. So we go to Apps, and I find one of the new ones that I've installed, which is this one here, Game Boy. So let's click on the cog and launch app. And you can see it's loading Game Boy Color. I'm going to switch to screen capture because it's going to be easier. Okay, and this is the interface you get in this. And you can see I can look around the room and I can see like a sofa behind me and a kitchen over there and so on. Um, but I can also pick a game. So say I wanted Tetris. I can click on that, click insert the cartridge, and that will launch on my Game Boy. And I'm holding it, my right hand, it appears like I'm holding a Game Boy. But the controls are on the buttons and the joypad. And you can see it's the same color as the one that I was given. Let's click on one player. And you can see I'm playing Tetris, but I can also move around. Uh, and I can use, I'm using my left hand for the controls in the Oculus controllers. And uh, I'm playing Game Boy on what looks like a Game Boy. So if I turn it around, I can flip it around in my hand. And I can, whoop, I don't know what happened there. And I can see it and I can play it as normal. It is super impressive. Anyway, I hope you liked all this. Hope it helped. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.